Amen. In Jesus' name. All right. Are you ready for the word? Okay. Please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 5, verse 4. The book of Luke chapter 5, verse 4. This is Jesus speaking. The Bible says that when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm continuing and concluding the message I started last week titled, Launched out, Launch Out Into the Deep launch out into the deep and this is part two launch out into the deep and this is part two last week we looked at the importance of building solid structures in our work and in our relationship with god we spoke about the importance of digging deep and making sure that our foundation is hitting the rock before we start building the superstructure. We looked at two groups of people who were building, the wise builder and the foolish builder. The wise builder digs deep, the foolish builder just builds on the, on the surface. The foolish builder is only focusing on the superstructure. It's only focusing on what people will say. But the wise builder focuses on the foundation. And we did say that it's important for you to to have a deep and an intimate relationship with God. I did also say that nothing great happens on the surface. Every, Every great destiny is birth out of a deep and an intimate relationship with God. So today we want to go a bit further and we trust that God will bless us as we dig a little bit further in Jesus' name. It's very interesting that uh, yesterday we saw uh, the launch of the rocket. I I don't know whether uh, how many of you were watching, but uh, there was close to about 1.7 million people who were watching, and whilst I was watching the launch, I was very, I was very emotional. I was very excited. I was shouting and I was clapping. It's just to to, to see how uh, how far we have come to be able to launch out into space, to be able to launch out into into places into the into into the international space station uh, and and very soon uh, it will become normal i believe in my lifetime uh myself my wife uh, uh, will will go to the space station in my in my lifetime without a shadow of doubt and i believe you also you also go to the space station at least in your lifetime. I believe that in our children's lifetime, traveling to space will become the new normal. You see, what we have to understand is that God is changing things at a very fast pace. And for us to catch up with what God is doing, it's important that our our roots in God is firmly established. So, in Luke chapter 5, verse 4, Jesus, as you are aware, will go there very soon. Jesus was teaching on the lake of Gennesaret. And whilst he was teaching, the Bible says that in verse verse 4, it says, Now when he had finished speaking, when he had finished teaching, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep launch out into the deep underline that launch out into the deep that means simon peter was at the surface simon peter was at the surface he was not launching out into the deep so jesus said to him launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch 
I love that. Now, there are two very important key things we have to understand here. Number one, you have to first launch out into the deep. And after you've launched out into the deep, the second thing you do is you let down your nets for a catch. You let down your nets for a catch. Notice Jesus never said, let down your net. Jesus said, let down your nets. Now, Jesus telling Peter to launch down, launch out into the deep, meant that Peter was at the surface. He was not going deeper. He wasn't taking risk. Worshiping God is taking risk. Are you following me? So it's important for us to launch out into the deep. Your, the depth of your deep determines what you can, you can handle in life. If your foundation is weak, you can't handle a great superstructure. Have you noticed that buildings, the tallest skyscrapers in the world, go and check when they were building, they went deeper. Sometimes, as a matter of fact, they actually go deeper. The foundation of some of these skyscrapers are deeper than the, the length or the height, the height of the building. Because the deeper you go determines what you can handle. If you don't go deep in God, you can't handle big things in God. If your prayer life is shallow, it's in the shallow waters, you can't access the deep things of God. You can't access revelation in God. Write this down. The, the only way we can know the deep things of God is by the Spirit of God. The only way we can know the deep things of God is by the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. The Bible says that as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. I have not seen, nor ear heard. I have not seen, nor ear heard. That means when you launch out into the deep, there are some things God has in store for you that I have not seen. It says, as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, Neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. That means your love for God must be deep, not shallow. Like Abraham, you must be willing to sacrifice your Isaac, your only son. You must be willing. You must be willing to go deep this year. So in verse 10 of 1 Corinthians chapter 2, we'll be reading from verse 2, verse 9 to verse 12. The Bible says that, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. You see, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for those who love him. But look at how the things are revealed. He said, but God has revealed this, uh, the things that I have not seen, the thing that ear have not heard. God has revealed them to us through his spirit. He has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God searches what? All things. And what does he search? He searches the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except by the Spirit of God. Verse 11. Are you following me? It says, for what man? 
knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, no man knows the things of God except the spirit of God. So basically what the Bible is saying is that it takes the spirit of God to reveal the things of the spirit of, in God. Are you following me? Verse 12. It says, But now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are freely given to us by God. So it takes the spirit of God to search the deep things of God. It takes the Spirit of God to search what? The deep things of God. If you want to go deep in God, you have to be led by the Spirit of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 14, the Bible says that as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So you can't access the deep things of God except you are led by the Spirit of God. Are you following me? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Glory be to God. These are the sons of God. Why is that? Because the deep things of God is only revealed by the Spirit of God. The deep things of God is only revealed by the Spirit of God. Listen, write this down. Even when it comes to giving, you will only receive on the level you give. Are you following me? Uh, don't, don't take these things casually. When it comes to the things of God, you have to be led by the Spirit of God to be able to understand what God is doing. So even when it comes to, to giving, you have to be led by the Spirit of God. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 6 to 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 to 10. I know Pastor Zama read this scripture this morning for a given time. I think in the first service. The Bible says that, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap how? Sparingly. Now, what does it mean when the Bible says he who sows sparingly? When the Bible says sowing sparingly, sparingly means uh, sowing or giving in a restricted or infrequent manner and in small quantities. That is what it means to sow sparingly. Sparingly, to sow sparingly means to sow in a restricted or in an infrequent manner and in small quantities. So the Bible is saying that this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap how? Sparingly. Will also reap in a restricted manner. Will also reap in a small manner. Will also reap in uh, the same way in an infrequent manner. And he who sows bountifully will also reap how? Bountifully. Now I have heard some men of God who says, oh, we don't give to God to get. With all due respect, that is not biblical. <laughs> With all due respect, it's not scriptural. Even God gave his only begotten son to get. He gave his only begotten son to get you. Are you following me? If God had not given his only begotten son, he would have, have no justification for the salvation or for the redemption of the world. When Abraham was about to sacrifice his only son Isaac, and the angel of the Lord called out to him and said, Do not do this harm to your son. Listen carefully to God's word. God said to Abraham, Now I know, and in blessing I will bless you. <laughs> so don't let anybody deceive you that when you give, you shouldn't expect anything from God. Your giving creates an atmosphere of faith to receive from God. Hallelujah. 
So the Bible says that he who sows sparingly shall also reap how? Sparingly. He who sows bountifully shall also reap how? Bountifully. Verse 7, it says, So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. And when you give cheerfully, look at what happens in verse 8. The Bible says that God is able to make all grace abound towards you, that you always having all sufficiency, oh glory be to God, in all things may have abundance for every good work. That should be your story. Your testimony is that I have abundance for every good work. Glory be to God. Verse 9 says that as it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and the increase in the fruits of your righteousness. So that means you receive on the level of your giving. So even when it comes to giving, you only receive on the level at which you give. Are you following me? Right, this down. To make a global impact that cannot be erased, we have to launch out into the deep. To make a global impact that cannot be erased, we have to launch out into the deep. So we go back to our foundational text from Luke chapter 5. This time we'll be reading from verse 1 to 7. The Bible says that now it was as the multitudes pressed upon him, upon Jesus, to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. And he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. The fishermen had gone out and they were washing their nets meant they had given up. They had toiled all night and caught nothing. Their business have collapsed. We are seeing that in this season, a lot of companies, a lot of businesses are collapsing. A lot of companies that have been around for hundreds of years have not been able to, to withhold, withstand the storm during this coronavirus pandemic. So they were washing their nets. They had given up on their business. They had thrown in their towel. The Bible says, verse 3, Then he got into one of the boats, talking about Jesus, and I pray that Jesus will get into your boat. Glory be to God. There are many boats on the, on, the, on the lake, but may Jesus get into your boat. May Jesus get into your boat of marriage. May Jesus get into your boat of business. May Jesus get into your boat of your family. May Jesus get into the boat of your children in the name of Jesus. Jesus got into the boat, one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And Jesus sat and started teaching the multitudes from Peter's boat. And when he had finished preaching, when he had finished speaking, the Bible says that Jesus said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Launch out into the deep. But Simon Peter answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Now he was toiling all night and catching nothing because he was playing at the seashore. He was playing at the shallow waters. You can't catch anything operating at the shallow waters of life. Even when it comes to ministry, to go deep, you have to, you have to, to make a, a global impact. You have to go deeper in your walk with God. In your walk with God. Peter was playing on the shallow waters and expecting to catch a great fish. He was toiling on the shallow, shallow water. Those who only play at the forefront of the waters don't catch anything great. Peter said, we have told all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. Jesus said, let down your nets. Peter said, I'll let down my net. 
Verse 6, and when he had done this, after he had obeyed the instruction of Jesus, the Bible says that he caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. May that be your story. May the blessing that God is bringing to you begin to break your net in a positive way, not in a negative way. But you also have to learn to prepare for the blessing that is coming. Verse 7, the Bible says that, So they signaled their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And when they came, they filled both boats, but that they also began to sing. So that means even the two boats could not accommodate the level of blessing. That's why it's important to launch out into the deep. Launch out into the deep this year. Don't be a shallow Christian. Be a deep Christian. Let your relationship with God this year go deeper. Let your relationship with the Holy Spirit this year, let it go deeper. Do exploits in God. Don't play on the shallow waters. You've been on the shallow waters for far too long. It's time to launch out into the deep. Hallelujah. I said it's time to launch out into the deep. It's time to go deeper in the things of God. The Bible says that deep calleth unto deep. If you are going to make any significant impact this year, you have to launch out into the deep. You have to launch out into the deep. You have to launch out into the deep. I said you have to launch out into the deep in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Listen, you even want to experience the glory of God? You have to launch out. You have to go deeper. To experience the glory of God, you have to go deeper in God. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. You have to go deeper in God. Exodus chapter 33 from verse 17 to 23. Moses wanted to see the, the glory of God. The Bible says that, And the Lord said to Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Verse 18, the Bible says that, And he said, Exodus chapter 33, verse 18, And Moses said, I beseech thee, Lord, please show me your glory. Verse 19, And he said, I will make my goodness to pass before thee. And I'll proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and you will be I will be gracious to whom I'll be gracious, and I'll show mercy on whom I'll show mercy. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. Thou shalt stand upon the rock, and it shall come to pass while my glory passes by. I will put thee in a cleft, in a cleft of the rock, and will cover you with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Hallelujah. It's time to go deeper. It's time to launch out deeper. You want to experience the deep things of God this year? Launch out into the deep. Stop playing on the shallow waters. I don't know about you. I'm believing God for some big things. I'm believing God that a time will come where Solution Chapel International is reaching every single member in every household, in every nation. So get ready. Your neighbors will become members of this church soon. Whether online or in every, any location where we are, God will be doing exploits because we are going deeper this year. Finally, as we get ready to close, don't settle for the surface when you can get into the deep for greater dimensions of God's blessings. Don't settle for the surface when you can get into the deep for greater dimensions of God's blessings. Genesis chapter 49 from verse 22 to 26. Genesis chapter 49 from verse 
22 to 26. I read, the Bible says that Joseph is a fruitful bull, a fruitful bull by a well, and his branches run over the wall. How is his branches going to run over the wall if he doesn't have a deep root? How can Joseph be fruitful if his roots are not deep? Are you following me? So you have to be deep. Joseph was fruitful only because he was a deep person. Verse 23, the Bible says that the archers have sought him grievously and shot at him and hated him. You see what happens when you go deeper? When people hate you, when they throw things at you, they throw curses at you, it will not work. Because you know that your trust is not in man. Your trust is in God. They hated him. But their hate did nothing to him. Verse 24, the Bible says that, But his bow remained in strength. Verse 24 of Genesis chapter 49, But his bow remained in strength. And the arm of his hands were made strong by the hands of the almighty God of Jacob. Hallelujah. Say a good amen to that. May God strengthen you today. May God cause your roots to be deeper. That no weapon of the enemy formed or fashioned against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. Verse 25. The Bible says, Even by the God of my father, who shall help thee, and by the Almighty, who shall bless thee with the blessings of heaven above. Blessings of the deep. Underline that. Blessings of the deep that lieth under, underneath. Blessings of the breast and of the womb. So there are different levels of blessings. And one of the levels of blessings is what I call the blessings of the deep the blessings of the deep there are some deep blessings waiting for you why are you playing on the surface why are you a shallow christian why don't you go deep you have been on that shallow place for too long it's time to go deep this year last verse verse 26 the bible says that the blessings of thy father have prevailed about the blessings of my progenitors glory be to god Unto the utmost bound of the everlasting hill, they shall be on the head of Joseph and on the crown of the head of him that was separated from his brothers. Hallelujah. Amen. So this year, this year, this year, let it be your year, Amen. your year where you are launching out into the deep. Make a covenant with God today and say to God, I don't want my relationship to be where it was. 10 years ago. I don't want my relationship to be the same as it was 15 years ago. Let your relationship with God go deeper. Let your relationship with God go to another level. Let your relationship with God this year be stronger than ever before. And as you do that, God will continue to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Launch out into the deep. You've been on the surface for so long. It's time, precious one, to launch out into the deep. Make a covenant with yourself and tell God that it's time. Tell God, God, I want to experience an intimate part of you with in this season. I want to experience intimacy. I want to go deeper. I want to break through on every side. But the only way that will happen is when you launch out into the deep. Hallelujah. We are experiencing the, the deep presence of God in this ministry today. Because we don't want to be on the shallow waters. You know, when you are, when you are lost in God, that is what it means to be in deep, deep relationship with God. When you're lost in his presence, when nothing else matters, all that matters is God. All that matters is his presence. I'm telling you, you will go far in your walk with him. 
Let nothing distract you this year. Let nothing take you away from the presence of God. Let the presence of God become the thing that draws you in the name of Jesus. As we come, get ready to close. Wherever you are, I want to lead you to Christ. I want to help you. You can't go deep in God if you have not given your life to Jesus. Listen. Giving your life to Jesus is real. If you die today, listen, hell is real, heaven is real. It's time to give your life to Jesus. You, you don't have tomorrow. Give your life to Jesus now. You don't have tomorrow. You have to give your life to Jesus when? Now, not tomorrow, not next week. Don't say, I'll do it next week. You don't have next week. So if you are there, you haven't given your life to Jesus, say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in your book of life. May I serve you all the days of my life. From today, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Use me to do exploits for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for all the thousands of people who are giving their lives to you today. Continue to bless them. Let them be preserved. May they not die in this season. Cover them with your precious blood. Use them in Jesus' name, amen. And amen. If you said that prayer sincerely from your heart, I want to help you grow. Write to us. Go to our website. Maybe you're watching on Facebook or YouTube or on our website. If you're on our website, great. There's a form there. Fill it out and send it to us and we'll respond back to you. But if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, go to solutionchapel.org solutionchapel.org www.solutionchapel.org and as you go there there's a form saying salvation fill that form when you fill that form we'll send you a book that will help you to grow and to become a great Christian in Jesus name hallelujah amen and amen well we've come to the end of the service we want to share the grace Let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the 